Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. The 75 days going to your first GCSE Maths paper. And in today's video, we're going to focus on 3D shapes. We're going to look at edges, faces, and vertices, and we're going to look at nets as well. So we're going to look at those 3D shapes and things involved from those. So if you've got the revision cards, card number 26 has got a recap of the names of the 3D shapes. Card number 27 has got a recap of what a vertex is, or if you've got more than one of them, what vertices are, your faces and edges. And then also card number 28 is a recap of some of your key nets that you need to know as well. So in this video, we're going to go through the names of the 3D shapes, edges, faces and vertices and nets. And I'll give you some questions to practice yourself. So feel free to pause the video at certain times and to try those questions. OK, so let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at quite a few different topics. So let's start off by looking at our two-dimensional shapes. So a shape with three sides called a triangle, four sides is called a quadrilateral, and we're going to be looking at the different types of triangles and quadrilaterals in a moment. Five sides a pentagon, six sides a hexagon, seven sides a heptagon, eight sides an octagon, nine sides a nonagon, and ten sides is a decagon. Also, it's important to you know, obviously, your circle and your semicircle and so on. So there's the names of some two-dimensional shapes, and you probably know those already. Now let's have a look at our types of triangles. So let's look at triangles in a bit more detail. So with our triangles, we've got a right angle triangle. So if a triangle's got a right angle, a 90 degree angle, it's called a right angle triangle. If two of the sides are the same length, that would obviously then be an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle has got two lines that are the same length as each other, two sides at the same length as each other. They've also got two angles that are equal, so in this case that angle will be the same as that angle. It's also got a one line of symmetry, vertical line of symmetry, like so, but that's an isosceles triangle. Um, here, this is an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle, all three sides have got the same length, so for instance, if that was seven centimetres, that side would be seven centimetres, and that side would be seven centimetres. It's also important to remember that an equilateral triangle, all angles are the same size, so if you do 180 divided by three, that'll be 60 degrees 60 degrees and 60 degrees. So there's our type of triangle so far. So if a triangle's got a right angle in it, it's a right angle triangle. You've also got isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles are triangles that have got two sides at the same length and two angles that are the same size and it's got one line of symmetry. An equilateral triangle where all three sides are the same length and all three angles are all 60 degrees. They're all the same. This would have three lines of symmetry. It would have three lines of symmetry like so. And then finally, a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle is a triangle where all three sides are different lengths to each other and all three angles are different sizes as well. Okay, so they're the types of triangle. Okay, so here's a question now for you to try. So feel free to pause the video now and match up these triangles to their names. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the right angle triangle. This is obviously a right angle triangle there. Okay, so that's our right angle triangle because it's got a right angle there. Okay, now in terms of our equilateral triangle, an equilateral triangle, all three sides are the same length and all three angles are each 60 degrees. So that's an equilateral triangle there at the bottom. Next, our isosceles triangle. Well, this is our isosceles triangle here because, as you can see, you've got two angles of the same size and two lengths of the same size of each other. And finally, the triangle at the top, as you can see here, the three sides are different lengths to each other, and you could measure it if you wanted to, and the angles are different sizes. So this is a scaling triangle there. Okay, so we've matched up those triangles to their names. Okay, now let's have a look at our quadrilaterals. So here, this is a square. Square's got four right angles. So a right angle, a right angle, a right angle, and a right angle. It would have four lines of symmetry. So it would have the vertical, horizontal, and the two diagonals. It would have rotational symmetry order four as well. So this has got order of rotational symmetry four, and that's a square. And oh, sorry, and obviously all four sides are the same length as each other is probably one of the key points of a square. So for instance, if that's 10 centimeters, that would be 10 centimeters, that would be 10 centimeters, and that would be 10 centimeters. So that's a square. A rectangle. A rectangle also has four right angles. So right angle, right angle, right angle, a right angle. The opposite sides are the same length as each other. So for instance, if that was 15 centimeters, that would be 15 centimeters. If that was three centimeters, that would be three centimeters. So the opposite sides have got the same length. It would have two lines of symmetry, a vertical one and a horizontal one, but not the diagonals. And it would have order of rotational symmetry too. Okay, now let's have a look at our next quadrilateral, the rhombus. So a rhombus, all four sides have got the same length. So this side's the same length as that side, which is the same length as that side, which is the same length as that side. So for instance, if this is eight centimeters, so with that one, that one, and that one. Uh, the opposite angles are equal to each other. So this angle here would be the same size as this one. And this angle here would be the same size as this one over here. It would have two lines of symmetry. So it would have a vertical line of symmetry in this case, and a horizontal one. And it'd have order of rotational symmetry too. Okay, our next quadrilateral, that's going to be a trapezium. 
So a trapezium has a pair of parallel lines. So as you can see here, the top is parallel to the bottom. Now, it doesn't always have to be this way. It could be, obviously, if you turn your head sideways, it could be, you know, the parallel sides could be that one and that one and so on. So that could be a trapezium, like so. So you could have your trapezium that way around. But here's the trapezium, and it's got one pair of parallel lines. This one does have a line of symmetry, but not all of them would. So you could easily draw a trapezium which doesn't have a line of symmetry. So like one like so. So this one wouldn't have a line of symmetry. As you can see, the top line is parallel to the bottom line there. So it is a trapezium and it doesn't have a line of symmetry. So this one does, but this one doesn't. And yeah, that's about it. An order of rotational symmetry, one. Okay, in terms of our next one, a parallelogram. I like to think of it in terms of a pushed over rectangle. So the opposite sides are the same length. So the top's the same in length as the bottom and the left-hand side's the same length as the right-hand side. Uh, the opposite angles are the same as each other. Uh, it doesn't have any lines of symmetry and it would be order of rotational symmetry, two. And finally, we've got a kite here in terms of the kite, this kite, the length of this line would be the same as that line. And this one here would be the same length as this one here. Uh, this angle would be the same size as that angle. It would have one line of symmetry. So this one's got a vertical line of symmetry like so. And this one would have order of rotational symmetry one. Okay, so let's have a look at two questions for you. So we've got a grid here and another grid. And you've been asked to draw a kite on the grid below and to draw a parallelogram on the grid below. So pause the video and try that now. Okay, so we were asked to draw a kite in the grid. This is the kite that I've drawn. Yours might look slightly different, but as long as you draw on a kite, and likewise, this is the parallelogram that I drew, but as long as you draw a parallelogram, then you've got it right as well, so well done. Okay, so we're about to move on to three-dimensional shapes, but just before we do, it's important that you remember all this information. So if you've got your window pens, remember to jot these on your window, or if you've got a cheat sheet, if you need to, put them on your cheat sheet. But it's important to know you know your names of your two-dimensional shapes, your types of triangles, your types of quadrilaterals, and so on. Okay, so let's move on to three-dimensional shapes. So here we've got a cube. And we've got a cuboid, a sphere, a cone, a cylinder, a triangular prism, a square base pyramid, a pentagonal prism, and so on. So it's important you know the names of the three-dimensional shapes. And again, if you need to remind yourself of those, feel free to either jot those on your window, draw little sketches off them, make some notes, and just remind yourself of the names of the three-dimensional shapes. Okay, let's have a look at a question now. So let's name these three-dimensional shapes. So press pause now and name these three-dimensional shapes. Okay, so the first one's obviously a cylinder, the second one's a cuboid, and the third one's a cone, and if you got that, well done. Okay, so they're the names of the three-dimensional shapes, and it's important to know some other parts as well. So we've got your vertices, which are your corners. So you, this cube would have one, two, three, four vertices on the top. Each one's called a vertex, but there's four vertices, that's the plural. So there'd be four vertices on the top, and it would have one, two, three, four in the bottom. So a cube has got eight vertices, eight corners. In terms of its faces, think of a dice, it would have six faces, the front, the back, the top, the bottom, the left and the right, so it would have six faces. And then the edges join the vertices, so it would have one, two, three, four on the top, one, two, three, four in the bottom, and one, two, three, four going vertically up and down. So altogether, there'd be 12 edges. So it's important that you know what vertices are, those corners, what faces are, well, each one of the faces of that three-dimensional shape, and what edges are, those lines that join up those vertices. So it's important that you know what those are, and if you've got your window pens, feel free to jot that on the window, write it down. If you've got the revision cards, fantastic, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at a question. So here we've got a triangular prism. Can you pause the video and write down how many edges it would have, how many faces it would have and how many vertices it would have. Okay, so in terms of the edges, well, let's count the edges. Well, it would have one, two, three on the front, one, two, three on the back, and it would have one, two, three leading backwards. So altogether, there'd be nine edges. Okay, now the faces, well, it's a triangular prism, so it would have the front triangle and the back triangle, the front and the back there. It would have the rectangle on the bottom, so it would be three, so one, two, three. And then it would have the rectangle on the left-hand side and the rectangle on the right-hand side, so it would have five faces. So it would be the front, the back, the bottom, the left and the right. And then finally the vertices, well, that's there are corners, so you're going to have one, two, three on the front, and one, two, three on the back. So altogether there would be six vertices, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question based on edges, faces, and vertices. So here's another question. It says, circle the solid that has five vertices. And we've got some choices there. A cube, a triangular prism, a square-based pyramid, and a cylinder. So which of those has got five vertices? So press pause now and figure out which of these has got five vertices. Okay, so it's not the cube. We know that's got eight vertices, the four on the top and the four in the bottom. It's not the triangular prism. We know that's got six, the three on the front and the three on the back, whenever we looked at that last one. A square-based pyramid. Well, if I was to consider a square-based pyramid, I think we had a picture of one here. Where did we have one? This is a square-based pyramid. It would have one, two, three, four in the bottom, 
and one on the top. So that would have five vertices. So a square base pyramid has five, and the last choice is a cylinder, and a cylinder wouldn't have five vertices. So the answer is a square base pyramid would have five vertices, and if you circle that, well done. Okay, next, let's look at nets. So next, nets. So here we've got some nets, and it's important to know what the nets of various uh, solids look like. So the net of the cube would look like this. You may have seen something like this, or you may have actually made it in lessons where you've had to fold it together and stick it together. I always find that a bit tricky, making those nets, those uh, you know cubes using the nets. So this is the net of a cube. This is the net of a cuboid. Obviously, it depends what the cuboid would look like, but this is you know an example of what a net of a cuboid could look like. The net of a square base pyramid, so obviously this would be the base and the four triangles would fold up to meet at the top. The net of the triangular prism, so this obviously would be the triangle on one face, this would be the triangle on the other one, then these two rectangles would fold up to meet at the top. The cone, well this part would roll around and then this would be the base of the cone, I think the net of the cone is pretty cool. And a cylinder, well this would roll around to be then the curved face and then that circle would go on the top and then that circle would go on the bottom. So these are some nets that would be quite useful to know what they look like. Okay and finally let's have a look at parallel and perpendicular lines. Now we looked at parallel lines whenever we talked about the trapeze earlier, but two lines that are always the same distance apart and never cross each other are called parallel lines. So this line and this line are parallel lines. They go in the same direction and they'll never meet each other. And if two lines cross each other at 90 degrees, they're called perpendicular lines. So here we've got two lines, they cross each other at 90 degrees, so they're called perpendicular lines. So let's have a look at a question for you to do. Here we have got a pentagon, A, B, C, D, E. And the question says, what line is parallel to BC and which line is perpendicular to BC? So pause the video now and give this a shot. Okay, so the first part says which line is parallel to BC. So we've got BC, so it's a horizontal line. So as you can see here, ED is also horizontal. So ED and BC, they're going in the same direction. If you carried on those lines, they'd never meet each other. So they are parallel. BC is parallel to ED, so ED. Okay, next, which line is perpendicular to BC? So here's BC. Perpendicular means it crosses it or meets it at 90 degrees. So if we look at this line CD, CD is perpendicular to BC because they meet at 90 degrees. So CD. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through the names of the 3D shapes. We've gone through edges. So those edges. We've gone through vertices so or vertexes. One of them is a vertex and more than one of them are vertices. And we've gone through faces as well. So we've gone through what edges, faces and vertices are. And we've also looked at the nets of a lot of the key 3D shapes. So it'd be quite useful for you to know the nets of. So I really hope you found this video useful. Um, I highly recommend that you keep up with your five a days. So you're doing your numeracy five a days, you're doing your foundation five a days. And if you're hoping for that top grade, have a look at your foundation plus five a days as well. But I just want to say, obviously, the 75 days to go into your GCSE maths paper, the first one. One of the key things is you've started your revision early, which is fantastic. So hopefully these videos, along with your five a days, along with the revision you're doing in school, along with past papers and things like that, hopefully they're all going to come together. You're going to do fantastic when your GCSE maths. So keep up the hard work and I'll see you at three o'clock tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.